Hey, it's me, Greg Shapiro. You know, one of the favorite parts of my job is going to my favorite comedians from around the world and asking them to come tour the Netherlands with me. This time, we got a comedian who's no stranger to the Netherlands. He's uh, from Canada by way of the UK, Pete Johansson. <laughs> I hate pictures of babies. I just hate them. This is how little I like pictures of babies. I don't want to see a picture of your baby even if he's missing. That's how little I... Oh, too far. Too far. I'm sorry. I like that joke. <laughs> So, Pete Johansson, Hi. for people who have never seen you before, how do you describe your show? How do I describe my show? Uh, just an uh, extrapolation of all the things that frustrate and intrigue me as a human being that I hope translates and frustrates and intrigues them. It's not, no, not rocket science, it's just trying to smile. Uh, I love abortion, don't you girls? <laughs> I, I adore abortion. I've always thought abortion actually should be the default setting for all pregnancies. I, um, I do. I think as soon as you're pregnant, you should be ushered into an abortion clinic, and then it should be up to you to talk your way out of it. That, that way, you would be practicing, like, no, no, this is what he's got. How am I going to write? No, maybe. A lot of people, comedians have, you know, autobiographical uh, influences. Uh, is your show autobiographical? Yeah, at certain points it is. Um, I talk about my evolution from being, I had an incredibly religious upbringing and the shedding of that uh, via mathematics, that's a moment. Uh, also trying to learn to be a tolerant person when raised by bigots and surrounded by hatred all my, all my youth and trying to not be like that and trying to be a good person. Now I went up the Burj Khalifa at 160, and I was surprised when I got up there. Because I, I, I think of myself as a fairly uh, s strong individual and things don't phase me very much, but I got up to the top and I was fucking scared. I really was. I, no, and, uh, you, I think you're misunderstanding. Not because of the height of the building at all. It was because I kept thinking a plane load of Christians was going to fly into it. <laughs> Where did you grow up specifically? I grew up in Canada, in uh, Kelowna, but I was, my father was extremely uh, uh, over-the-top Catholic. Uh, he sort of held on to some of, the, some of the same ideals that the Spanish had at that point. He's all pro, uh, you know, uh, uh, Inquisition and uh, <laughs> all the most radical ideas of Catholicism. And I was raised with that, as well as a, an idea that the world was going to end. Uh, you know, he's Opus Dei, he's uh, just... Really? Yeah, yeah, very, very strict. Doesn't believe, thinks the, co the popes are far too liberal. Um, a lot in common with Mel Gibson, actually, when you think about it, my father. But, uh, I, yeah, so I had to sort of shed that sort of uh, sheltered, fear-based uh, upbringing and sort of find humor in it. And comedy kind of saved my mentality that way. If you break down that joke, there's actually nothing wrong with it. It's a, it's a funny piece of satire provoking actually the largest majority in our population, which is Christians. So it's like, fuck, fucking take some fun out of it. It's fucking funny. Ha ha ha, Christians flying in a plane. Ha ha ha. And it's good. It's for relief to laugh. And plus, we know the ludicrous of it. You know, Christians would never fly a plane into a building, you know? <laughs> you know, unless they built an abortion clinic on the top floor. <laughs> How did you make the decision to go from North America to the UK? Uh, I didn't. My wife made that decision oh. for me. Uh, my wife got a modeling contract in London. Okay. And uh, I lost all my work because uh, gas prices went up. And uh, I was. When about, was this? This is 2007, 2008. I was about uh. to host a show, and uh, it was about travel. And then because the gas prices went up so high, they, they stopped. They couldn't afford the plane tickets for the show to be shot, <laughs> and the show basically went bankrupt. And I had three months that I booked to shoot the show, and I was like, I have no work. And she goes, well, I just got offered a contract in London. And I was like, okay, fine, let's move to London. So I followed her, and huh. then I, yeah, I, I seemed to fit in really well over there. I uh, enjoy the British culture. I like the British people. I thought about a year ago, hey, I think I'm British. And that's when I realized I definitely wasn't. There's was this cathartic moment where I just, fuck, I'm not British. And it hit me really shockingly, because it was during the riots. Do you remember the riots that took place in London? Don, does anybody remember those? Yeah, <laughs> somebody chuckled at that. Oh yeah, that's because I pronounce it the, my way. Um, I just refuse to pronounce things the way other people do because I just, I, I, London sounds better to me. I feel like a Londoner. That's what I feel like. You go back a lot between the UK and, and North America. Um, what are the biggest differences in the audiences and what are the differences in your playing style? 
Um, broad myopic perception. Uh, in the North America, the, the idea of your existence doesn't ex go outside your borders. They don't want to hear stories about any other country when you're in North America. You can't sit there and talk about the Netherlands. You can't talk about the UK. They don't care. No. And they, even if it's poignant to them, uh, they don't care. Whereas in anywhere over here, you can talk about anywhere else in the world, and they're still vested in it. There's a curiosity. So I was watching the riots in London, and um, I was there with two of my British friends, and uh, about an hour into the riots is where I realized I'm still Canadian. And this is what happened. We were watching the riots, and their faces were just, oh, I can't believe this is happening. I was watching it, and I said something out loud that shocked everybody, kind of. Uh, I said the most Canadian phrase I could possibly say in this situation. I was looking at the TV, and I said, Jesus, you know what the cops here need? And they're like, what? I said, a bear. <laughs> And they all looked at me like, is that what you're thinking right now? You're thinking about bears? And I'm like, yeah, I'm fucking thinking about bears because you guys could use some bears right now, don't you think? How many times have you performed in the Nederland already? Probably about 12, I would say, uh, all together, like with individual shows and stuff like that. I started coming over here doing comedy about five, six years ago originally, uh, and uh, over to my favorite club in the world, Tumblr, giving a plug. Uh, and uh, yeah, and I just keep expanding doing shows elsewhere and, and little TV things, and uh, yeah, it's been lovely. I, I mean, I adore the Dutch audience. I adore their, their tolerance and their intellect. Uh, and you guys don't judge. You generally don't judge. You know where I don't think you judge enough? And here's my thing. I've been here for little while. I love this country very much. Uh, I cycled across your country a little while ago. Me and my wife came over and gave ourselves 14 days to cycle across the Netherlands, and uh, we had like 12 days to kill after that. <laughs> What's an example of uh, a joke that, y or a topic that you find works particularly well with the Dutch? Um, now, I'm not sure if it's because the people are Dutch or because I, f I feel more comfortable in front of a Dutch audience. I, 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 but material that works here are maybe slightly more controversial topics, things that uh, maybe have been battled out in society here long before I arrived. You're riding a bicycle. It's earth friendly. It's, uh, it's, it's good for your health. It's considerate. It's, a, it's the future of all transportation. So we're going to create a little lane for you. And I'm like, oh, fuck, that's the Dutch. Yeah, they're rewarding that. And I'm like, yeah, look at you guys all riding your bikes and celebrating your bike trail. And then, and then a fucking scooter comes by. <laughs> And then philosophically, I'm taken aback. I'm like, what the fuck? Why are you? What, are you, what did you do to earn the bike trail, OK? You're a scooter. You're not doing fuck all for anybody, OK? And I'm like, OK, you know what? I don't see the Dutch getting mad at the, at the scooter, so I'm not going to get mad. I'm going to follow the Dutch lead of tolerance and acceptance. And I'm like, OK, you know what? Huh? OK, fuck, no, that's cool. That's cool. I've heard people. Uh, in this comedy tour so far, make fun of Canadians for being outdoorsy, uh, very, you know, connected with nature. Uh, do you get, what are the stereotypes of being a Canadian? I haven't heard anybody make fun of us, but I think my own personal stereotype of Canadians is uh, we are, yeah, we're, I think we're a little bit more environmental. I, we try to be, yeah. and uh, I think that plays into our understanding of nature and our love of animals. Yeah. yeah. Like I was saying, I judge countries on how they treat bears, and Australia, Sweden, thank you very much. But there's one country that pisses me off on the way they treat animals, and you'll probably guess it, some people often do, is uh, China. Yes, of course. Now, I'm not picking on the government of China. I want to be specific here. I actually, and now nobody believes me when I say this, I actually like the government of China. And they're like, what? You like the government of China? Yes, I do. And you're like, why? That does make sense. Well, it does to me. Because uh, all of us Western countries, the Netherlands, UK, Canada, the US, we all say one thing, but we do another. We're kind of bad people, but we talk like we're good people. I like China because they fucking, they say what they are. I like, hey, China, yep, you for human rights? Nope. <laughs> all right, cool, we're done here. Thanks a lot, buddy. <laughs> How do you see yourself going from here? Uh, more in the UK or maybe more in the US or in North America? Probably straight to the grave, I'm thinking. I, I've probably got five more years alive, I'm guessing. I, I don't feel good and I'm not going to go to the doctor. So, yeah, I can't see myself living that much longer. <laughs> is that too dark? <laughs> <laughs> now, what might be throwing you off, I notice, is that I'm quite glisteny, okay? Now, I, I realize that you're going, oh my god, this man is sweating quite a bit. And you're going, oh, is he sweating everywhere on his body? Here's a neat little fact. I am not. I am only sweating out my face. Now, if you believe in God, I don't know if you do, but if you do believe in God, this is how your God made me, okay? He took my body, and when he's done, he goes, you know what we should do? Put all of his sweat glands in his face. <laughs> how about that? Just, there you go. Enjoy. And he pushed me out in the world and said, go on, see if anybody trusts you. Go on. <laughs>